The Galaxy Note 10 Plus, years old, yet running One UI 7 with full Galaxy AI features like it was built for it. And honestly, that's why I've always loved the Note series. If you ignore the age for a second, design-wise there's nothing that feels outdated, especially from the front. Sure, brands today are going for that rounded aesthetic but these squarish notes, they still look premium. So in this video, I'll walk you through how One UI 7 looks and feels on this phone what works, what doesn't, any bugs and whether you should install it. And if you decide you want to try it, I'll show you the full installation process in the second half. Everything here is pulled straight from Samsung's latest flagships, from wallpapers to widgets. Even the AI tools from the Ultra are here. Photo editing, audio editing, the new writing assist, all working. And yes, before you ask, One UI 8 isn't out for it yet, so don't get greedy. Let's appreciate what we actually have here first. The new control panel is glossy and clean. When you swipe down from the right, you get the control center. And from the left, your notifications. Looks nice, feels smooth, but honestly, why are we copying Apple's bad choices? It's one extra step just to check notifications. Even though, to be fair, Samsung has grouped them neatly. Every app has its own expandable section, like folders. On the home screen, you get those new icons and those folder layouts we have seen on the latest Galaxy phones. The notification brief works perfectly across home, lock and even always on display. No bugs at all. And yes, the AI wallpaper generator works beautifully here. The wallpapers you are seeing right now are actually AI generated and they are completely unique to me. You can't just download them, you have to generate your own combinations. And on this curved Quad HD dynamic AMOLED screen, they look stunning. Also, yeah, ignore that black dot in the corner. Now Galaxy AI on this thing is no joke. The writing assist is built right into the keyboard. Tell it what to write and it'll do it for you. But it writes with caution, not like a real friend. And the funny part, if you tell it, my friend is lazy, it refuses. Meanwhile, I'm using it because I'm lazy. The photo assist is surprisingly capable too. You can move or remove people and objects or draw something and let it generate a realistic version. You can even turn your sketches into proper artwork or create images with just a description. Then there's the audio eraser which removes background noise in videos. Then there's interpreter which can live translate spoken conversations. And yes, it actually works here too. And in Samsung Notes, the AI can summarize, format or translate what you write. And the voice recorder, yeah, it also works. There's more freedom too. Custom lock screen layouts, adjustable widgets, shapes and styles. You can literally resize and move everything. The redesigned icons and layouts make the Note 10 Plus look stunning. Almost like a brand new flagship. One UI 7 itself is a visual overhaul. But paired with this hardware, it genuinely feels gorgeous. And yes, good lock works. You can install modules like KeyCafe to tweak your keyboard style. Sure, it looks flashy and over the top but it's fun to experiment with. You have also got Theme Park, Wonderland, Lockstar all working perfectly. And the best part, I've been using it for a few days now and surprisingly, no major bugs. When it first booted up, there was a bit of lag. But once I signed in and updated my apps, everything stabilized, smooth, consistent and reliable. The only things that don't work are those tied to hardware limitations, nothing unexpected. The Exynos 9825 inside this phone is still holding up really well. I have tested apps, multitasking and even gaming. Stable frame rates, long sessions, all smooth. No overheating, no battery panic, just decent performance throughout. But still, check the comment section to see what others have experienced, just in case there's something I haven't come across yet. So if you plan on installing it, make sure to thank the developers behind Eternity ROM. Now a few important notes before we start. This port only works on the Exynos variants of the Galaxy Note 10 and Note 10 Plus. And yes, your bootloader must be unlocked. Don't worry, we'll go through everything together, step by step. First, back up everything on your phone. This process will completely wipe your device. So if you are on stock and want to keep your data, make sure nothing important is left behind. If you are already on another custom ROM, you can skip straight to the recovery installation part where you flash the recovery in download mode. Now before we start flashing anything, connect to Wi-Fi and check for any pending updates. Make sure your device is running Android 12 with One UI 4.1. Next, go to settings, about phone, software information, and tap on the build number 7 times until it says developer options are unlocked. Then go back, open developer options and enable both OEM unlocking and USB debugging. Once that's done, turn your phone off completely. 
Now on your PC, download the required files from the Eternity ROM servers. You'll need the ROM file, the repartitioner, the cleaner, and the recovery file. You'll also need Odin and Samsung USB drivers. Install the drivers and extract Odin. These are the files we'll be working with. Now take your phone again, press and hold volume up plus volume down together and plug in your USB cable. You'll see a warning screen. If your bootloader is already unlocked, just press volume up once and wait here. We'll get back to this same screen in a second. But if its bootloader is not unlocked, press and hold volume up until you see the confirmation screen. I'm unlocking mine here, so I'll just press volume up again to confirm. With that, your phone will reset, which might take a few minutes and you'll land back on the welcome screen. Now quickly set it up again, connect to Wi-Fi, check for updates one last time and confirm that OEM unlocking and USB debugging are still on. Turn the phone off again. Next, once more, press and hold volume up plus volume down and connect the USB cable. And when the screen appears, press volume up once. This time, we'll be in download mode. Now back on your PC, open Odin. Make sure you see that blue indicator, which means your phone is connected properly. In the Options tab, uncheck Auto Reboot. Now in the AP section, browse and select Eternity ROM recovery file. Once that's loaded, hit Start. In a few seconds, Odin should show Pass, and that means you're good to go. Now grab your phone, press volume up, volume down, and power all together. As soon as the screen turns black, release volume down. And when you see the Samsung logo, release power. But keep holding volume up. That'll boot you straight into the Team Win Recovery, TWRP. Once inside, go to Wipe, Format Data, type Yes, and go back to Reboot Back to Recovery. Now your phone storage will show up on the PC. On your PC, move the repartitioner file to the internal storage. Back into up, go to install, find the file, and flash it. After that, you'll need to format data again to fix the encryption issue. Same process. Wipe, format data, yes, and then you will have to go back to reboot back to recovery. Now copy over the cleaner file and the ROM file to your phone. This might take a few minutes. Just wait for it to finish transferring. Once they are there, flash the cleaner file first. It's quick and the phone will reboot automatically. When it's back in recovery, go to install, ROM file, swipe to confirm, and then here, press volume up to confirm again. This step takes about 5 to 6 minutes, so be patient. When it's done, go back to wipe, format data, yes, and then reboot to system. And that's it. In a few minutes, you'll see the One UI 7 home screen running right there on your old Note 10 Plus. If you try this out, let me know your experience in the comments. It really helps others who are planning to install it too. That's it for this one. My name is Mubashir, you're watching Hanestech and I'll see you in the next video.